Good morning. Uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, in truth, I had hoped that we would be able to be meeting together today, and uh, I was uh, really looking forward to that, but as it stands right now, uh, we still cannot meet in full capacity like we had planned. But now that we are in phase two, in case you haven't heard, uh, there have been some uh, changes made to allow uh, some religious services to begin to take place. Uh, so for us, even though we are going to be meeting in a limited capacity, uh, we're going to offer Bible study uh, starting today at 5 o'clock p.m. That's going to be here at New Life. And uh, the capacity is going to be limited to 25 people. Now, please be responsible. If you're sick, please stay home. If a member of your family is sick, please stay home. Uh, we want to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe that comes in. And then also, uh, if you're in a high-risk category, I don't want you to feel obligated to return, and I don't want you to just rush back to church so that you can hug your friends. I know you really want to. I want to hug you too. Uh, but I want you to be cautious and responsible. Uh, so if you're in a high-risk category, please consider uh, waiting just a little bit longer so we can make sure that you are safe. Uh, we've done some things here at the church to try and make sure that uh, social distancing can happen. Uh, we're going to be uh, adhering to everything that we can to make sure that you're as safe as possible. But there's still a lot of personal responsibility that goes into this, so please be careful. But I also want to remind you that God, He's not surprised by our circumstances. The situation that we find ourselves in, uh, it was it was no surprise to God. And in fact, that's kind of a key thing that I want to talk to you about today. Uh, God knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going through right now. He knows what you've gone through before. And all of that is because He has a plan for you. Let me be clear. I assure you, God has a plan for you. Uh, when I was in high school and middle school, I was not as focused as my girls are. Uh, you, most of you know uh, Taslina and Esther, and they're pretty incredible human beings. Uh, they're pretty fantastic kids, absolute blessings. And I, I love my girls a lot, but man, these girls are focused and driven. Uh, for example, uh, Taslina, she's a sophomore uh, currently at Oahu High School, and she shared with us a couple of years ago that she wanted to be a surgeon. And specifically, she wants to do facial reconstruction. She wants to be able to uh, correct cleft palates and be able to do some reconstruction, for example, people who may have been in an accident or something like that. And I, I truthfully believe that this is a really good fit. It, it takes her love for art and her understanding of science and it kind of merges them together. And she'll be able to perform a vital service that truthfully is going to be a healing ministry. Uh, it, she gets to take the gifts and the talents that God gave her and use them to accomplish his purposes. If she performs every uh, thing that she does uh, as a service to him, she's going to literally be healing people as his hands. And that's an absolutely an amazing thing. And, and I'm really proud of her. But she's a sophomore in high school, and she's like, yep, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. And then Esther, Esther's in middle school. She's uh, uh, in seventh grade at Hilltop. And Esther wants to be an Air Force officer. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, Pastor, lots of kids want to be fighter pilots when they grow up, especially when they're in middle school. But I, I want you to understand, Esther's been telling us this for over two years now. And she's not only been telling us this, but she's been saying that she specifically wants to attend the Air Force Academy. I did not, did not uh, it, in any way uh, tell her that she had to do that. This is Esther's doing. And she will sit and watch videos 
about the academy their their training and when they the first day they arrive she absolutely loves it but she wants to also prepare and prepare herself uh, for what she's going to endure what to expect what it's going to be like and the things that she needs to do now so that she can be uh, the best cadet she can be when she gets there I think she's serious about this I think it's what she really wants to do and in truth they can both change their minds they, they have plenty of time to do that and we uh, we encourage them to be open to things but I also know that if God has put something in their heart, then I want them to not only work toward that, uh, but I want them to uh, prepare themselves to do the things that he's called them to do. And they are both pretty set on their choices. I, on the other hand, am not my girls. Uh, when I was in high school, I, I wanted to do everything. I, I had so many things that I, I wanted to do. Um, and uh, for example uh, for a, a while I really wanted to be an ER surgeon I thought I would be good in that role but even though that was of interest to me uh, the money was not available uh, for me to be able to pursue that particular career path um, I considered business uh, I think that was more my dad's dream but it was something that I did look at. Uh, music, I was uh, pretty good at music and I considered it for a while. I also looked at combining the two. One of the colleges that I was looking at had a program in music business and it was uh, for people who wanted to go and have like a recording studio as an example. And that was something that I thought that I would really enjoy doing. But again, the money was not really in place for me to pursue that particular career path, at least not in the way that I had thought. Um, being a military officer was, I guess that was in my genes. Uh, my grandfather uh, was an army officer, uh, my uncle an army officer, my dad an army officer, and so they all told me to make sure I joined the Air Force if I ever decided to go into the military. Uh, because they're smart, wise men. And uh, I, uh, I think that I struggled with that because I didn't really know how I was going to accomplish that goal if that was something that I wanted to pursue uh, because I think my dad's real plan for me and, and what he really encouraged me to do and impressed for me to do was to get my college education before I did anything. He really wanted me to go to school. It was something that he had missed out on. Uh, he had not completed his college degree, and it was something that he really wanted to see me accomplish. Uh, so I was looking for a place to go to college, and uh, the options were running out. There were uh, some schools that had accepted me. I think every school that I applied to accept, accepted me, but they... Uh, there wasn't any way that I could afford college uh, for most of them. But then my dad wanted me to do a tour of the campus at what was then Troy State University, now Troy University in Troy, Alabama. I had zero interest in Troy, truthfully. I, I didn't really want to go to school there, but my dad had gone to school there for a while, and it wasn't that he wanted me to go there and follow in his footsteps. That wasn't exactly it. Uh, my grandparents live in, uh, lived in Ozark, Alabama, which was about half an hour away from Troy or just a little bit more. And when he was in school there, he used to go on the weekends and spend time with his grandmother. And what was really cool was when I went to school at Troy, I would go on the weekends and spend time with my grandmother and his grandmother. And it, uh, it just worked out that way that I got to go and see family, but it gave me a place to uh, uh, to get away, to have a safe place where I could go and eat good food and do my laundry and sleep, and uh, and if I needed it, there was somebody that was close, that was close by in the event of an emergency. I had somebody that I could rely on, uh, a family that loved me, and I think that was really what he was trying to encourage me to do. 
was to have that connection. But I agreed to do this uh, uh, Troy uh, campus uh, tour. And, all right, let's go to Troy. We'll do the tour, see what they got to say. And one of the things that they had us do was apply while we were there. I brought my application. I had not applied to Troy before this day. And uh, I turned in my application. We went on the tour. When we got back from the tour, uh, one of the deans of financial aid was there. And he wanted to know which one of us was Thomas. And I raised my hand. And he said, if you'll sign today, we're prepared to give you a full tuition scholarship to include out-of-state fees. That sounds like a pretty good blessing, doesn't it? Well, uh, that's exactly what I did. I, uh, I was sold. And uh, about a month later, I went to orientation at Troy. And it was uh, there that I was invited to try the Air Force ROTC program. Just sign up for this first class and see how you like it. And I signed up for the first class. And uh, four years later, I graduated with a, a Bachelor's of Science in Business, and I had earned my commission as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. And I knew where I was going. And I could spend a lot of time right now telling you so many stories about how God used me during my four years at Troy. I can tell you about some amazing experiences and some of those coincidences that we know are not coincidences that followed in the years to come as well. Um, it was very clear to me and to people who knew me well that God had a plan for me. And because I obeyed my earthly father, I, my heavenly father was able to work out his plans for my life. And providence was clearly at work. But there's something that I have learned about providence, and I want to share that with you today. Providence is directly tied to obedience. Now, Scripture is full of people who obeyed God. Uh, you've got people who did that with enthusiasm, like Noah, who invested so much time and effort in doing what God had called him to do. And hey, it worked out pretty well for Noah, didn't it? You know, he, uh, he was able to uh, provide a way of salvation for himself and his family. And uh, then you have some guys who did it a little more reluctantly, like Jonah. I mean, let's be real, Jonah tried really hard to disobey God. He went out of his way to do the wrong thing. But uh, God knew that Jonah was the guy he wanted. And he orchestrated everything. And providence was so apparent in that story. Uh, you should look deep into that one day and see how God used even Noah's, I mean, excuse me, Jonah's disobedience to serve the purposes of uh, his plan, God's plan. Uh, for the people of Nineveh. And then Jesus is probably the best example of both being obedient and reluctant. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, he, uh, he makes it very clear in Scripture he did not want to go to the cross, and I certainly don't blame him. But he did. And I know that you and I are both very glad that he chose to be obedient to the Father. But as we celebrate today, this day of Pentecost, I would like you to consider a couple of things that Jesus shared during his ministry uh, while he was on earth. And to do this, we're going to start in John chapter 14. If you got your Bible, grab it, uh, John 14, and I'm going to be starting in verse 15. And this is what Jesus says in John 14. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me. But you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, 
You will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am, I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them, and reveal myself to each of them. Now in this passage of Scripture, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. But he makes some profound connection statements here concerning the Trinity. Note that he said, if, if we love him, we should obey him and his commandments. But he also says those who accept his commandments, my commandments, and obey them are the ones who love him. They're the ones who love me, the ones who obey my commandments. And, and he says this connection statement that uh, that he lives with you now uh, verse 17 later will be in you Jesus is referring to himself that God the Holy Spirit the Trinity Father Son Holy Spirit it's the same God and then he says the Father will give us another advocate that advocate the Holy Spirit Jesus tells us will lead us into all truth now earlier in the book of John if you go back a few pages you can go to John chapter 4 Jesus said this he said but the time is coming verse 23 of John 4 the time is coming indeed it is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way, for God is spirit. So those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. One of the questions that I am very commonly asked uh, since I've been uh, the minister here at New Life is, how can I love God? I actually get this question relatively often and it surprised me because loving God I thought was pretty easy God love me down on the cross I love him back I, okay I can do that but what people are looking for is how can I love God like what does that look like how do I love in spirit and in truth how do I do that I, I was having a hard enough time just trying to figure out this whole loving God thing and now you're saying love him in spirit and truth what does that look like and for that I think we need to go back to our first text in John 14 for the answer so to love God we love him in spirit and in truth and then Jesus said in verse 15 of John 14 if you love me obey my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. So it is the Holy Spirit, God, who exists as Spirit, who will lead you into all truth. Jesus said in verse 20, When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. It's in this where we truly find how to love God with Jesus, God, Holy Spirit living inside of us, we can fully accept the commandments of God and obey them without that first understanding that He is God and accepting that truth. We, we can't move beyond that. But once you have made that decision to follow Christ, once He has called you and says, hey, come follow me, and you have decided to be His disciple, now that He's in you, you can walk in all truth. By obeying the Holy Spirit, we show genuine love for God. Doing what the Holy Spirit has commanded you to do, that is loving God in spirit and in truth. This is how you love Him. By walking with the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, and doing what He commands you to do every day. Can I make that any plainer? That's how you love God by walking with the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, every day and doing what He's commanded you to do. Now that command comes in two forms. It comes from Scripture and it comes from 
the Holy Spirit directly. I'll get into that in just a second. So this is what ties us back to the story that I told about myself. Uh, it's also uh, what ties into the story of our Bible characters, Noah and uh, uh, Jonah, and, and our greatest Bible hero, Jesus. Um, listen, God has a plan for your life. You, right now, the person who is sitting here watching this, God has a plan for your life. God had a plan for my life. He needed me to go to Troy. He needed me to become an Air Force officer. Those experiences have prepared me in so many ways to be a minister of the gospel. He knew where he wanted me to go. He had a plan. He put everything in place so that I could accomplish that plan. That's called providence. He has a plan for you the exact same. But pastor, he hadn't called me to be. Listen, he's called you to be. He may not have called you to be a minister, he may not have called you to uh, be a missionary or an evangelist. That doesn't mean he doesn't have a plan for you, and it certainly doesn't mean he hasn't called you. I was just telling you about my daughter's heart to want to be a surgeon. That's a ministry. To be able to heal as an extension of her God that she loves so much, that's walking in spirit and in truth and obeying the Holy Spirit. Sometimes God's plans for us as he works out how he gets us there it's very subtle it comes in the form of coincidence or was that God sometimes it's not sometimes it's a full ride scholarship to Troy University that you weren't even planning on going on the tour that day you know sometimes he's in your business directly and you need to be looking for those opportunities and to get there you have to be obedient and the way that you are obedient comes down to this I told you we would get here First, read the Bible. Read the Bible. Hear God's commandments and obey them. Now, where do I start in the Bible? Should I start with uh, Genesis? Probably not, because in just a couple of chapters, you're going to be in Numbers, and then, wow, you are going to be overwhelmed. I would recommend starting in the New Testament. Uh, start with the Gospels. Hear what Jesus taught, and then from there, move on to so much of the theology that we enjoy as it comes from the letters of Paul uh, to the churches where he served. And that'll give you a really good idea of what God's commandments are for your life. And then second, listen to the Holy Spirit. You know that little voice in your heart that tries so hard to get you to do good and you just really want to do naughty and it's like, no, do good. And love people and love God and obey those commandments that you just read in scripture that little voice is actually uh, a very big voice and it belongs to the Holy Spirit and he's that advocate God's voice in you and it's to him that we have to listen and obey so take the instruction of scripture and obey it Listen to the Holy Spirit and obey Him every day. That is how you love God. And listen to me, folks. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, He's the superstar of Pentecost Sunday. He's what this whole day is about. He came so that we could know Him, so that we could hear His voice, walk with Him daily. Jesus said He would not leave us as orphans. He didn't. God came to us on Pentecost Sunday in a new experience, in a new way, so that we could hear his voice as he is in us, working through us, and we get to be filled up with him so that we can pour him out. Our job is just to obey, and that is the evidence, obedience is the evidence of God's love in our life and our love for God. I thank you for joining us today. Let's take just a minute and pray. Father, I thank you for everyone who is watching this video right now. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you guide each and every one of them. That you show them what your plans are for their life. And that you work your providence 
so that everything works out for good and that they can accomplish your will and do what it is you've called them to do. And if they're struggling with insecurity or fear, I ask Holy Spirit that you embolden them and that you provide them with the wisdom to know what to do and how to do it so that they can be the disciples that you've called them to be and that they can go and fulfill the Great Commission using whatever gifts and talents you've provided them with. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you for joining us today, and uh, we look forward to being able to meet with you in the coming weeks, uh, but we are going to continue to provide the videos in some context for those of you who are not able uh, to return to church right away. So look for more information on that on our Facebook page. Love you. I'll see you next week.